Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Rainer and this is my channel, Rainier Books. You might see that the quality of this video is a little bit different to the videos that I filmed recently the last couple of months. The reason is that I'm doing this on a laptop computer and I'm doing this with the help of Zoom to make it a little easier for me tonight because I don't have so much time to edit afterwards. So I hope that this is gonna be a good video that I don't have to edit that much on my other computer where I will put it afterwards. So I want to tell you about week 41, what has happened and what I have read and what I have received. Let's get started. Well, um, I'm start with a reading today. I started with the world last week and the week before, but today I start with a reading. I haven't finished it yet, so I'm behind my plan. I know that, but I'm gonna read a couple of pages and maybe I'm gonna finish it tomorrow on my plan, on my schedule for this week, which ends today on Sunday is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. Idaho by Emily Ruskovich, a novel that she published in 2017. I like the cover very much. Um, this was published um, in 2017 in the United States by Random House in New York. And this novel, Idaho, won the Dublin Literary Award as late as last year in 2019, two years after the novel was published, which has to do with the rules of the Dublin Literary Award. I come back to that in a different video a couple of days into next week, hopefully. Um, this is a novel, you see that I have some notes here already. Uh, this is a novel that really uh, is very powerful and very strong. It's um, about Idaho, about the state of Idaho. Surprise, surprise. This is about a couple named Wade. Wade and Anne. When, we, when the novel starts, the chapters are um, in this novel are always uh, numbers of years. So you can see here, it's 2004. That's the first chapter. When we start the novel in 2004, uh, Wade is married to a woman named Anne. Wade is in his 50s, I think, and is a couple of years younger, maybe, and they are living together in a house in the mountains somewhere in Idaho. Uh, it's close to a place called Ponderosa. And um, let me take a sip. Today's sponsor. Thank you very much. No, I'm kidding. Um, Wade and Anne are living in the mountains and you realize very soon that something weird, something crazy, something creepy is about the whole relationship because Wade is in his early 50s, but he already is suffering from dementia like his father did, his grandfather did, and his great grandfather did. And there are faces in his dementia when, he, when Anne does certain things and he starts being violent towards Anne, which, is, which he doesn't remember afterwards. And Anne just loves him and she knows this is going to happen again, but it's super creepy, isn't it? And then we get to learn that um, Wade was married before to a woman named Jenny, and then they had two children uh, named May and June, two daughters, and that May has died, was killed, probably by Jenny, and the June has disappeared. That is the story, and we jump back and forth in time, get the story from different perspectives. I'm about 60, 65% in, and I really like it. It's very creepy. It's a, a character-driven story that is powerful. And I think uh, this, this is a very good read in the end. So Idaho, I hope to finish it tomorrow. So tomorrow I start um, my buddy read with Paula, and we're going to read Vanessa Veselka's book, The Great Offshore Grounds, which you might know uh, has not made it to the shortlist of the National Book Award, but it was on the long list at last, at least. And this is Vanessa Vaselka. Uh, we're going to read this book together in hopefully 10 days. That's the plan. And afterwards, we are going to maybe meet here on Zoom and talk about this book and give that video to all of you uh, through our two channels. Vanessa Vasalka, The Great Offshore Grounds is the next project, which is starting next week, and I'm very much looking forward to do, to, do, to do it. Then I got some books by mail this week that I have to show you, a book haul. It's a mini book haul baked in this week, a 41 um, wrap-up. 
a book that is on my uh, list to read until the end of the year. It arrived surprisingly pretty fast. This is from Canada. It's on the short list of the Scotiabank Giller Prize, David Bergen's short stories, Hear the Dark. Hear the Dark short stories by David Bergen in this beautiful pocket version. Um, I will read this later this year. Then I'm super happy, I'm super excited to show you this one because I thought this book was, so, was super hard to get, but I actually got it and bought it at a Swedish bookshop online and received it after a pretty short time, actually. This is on the short list of the National Book Award in the United States, and it's also short stories. Now, the experts among you know which book I'm talking about. I'm talking about Disha Filias, The Secret Lives of Church, Church Ladies, Secret Life of Church Ladies by Disha Filia, nominated for the National Book Award and on the shortlist. Uh, pretty um, thin book that I should be reading, I shall be reading in the next couple of weeks. Then you remind, uh, you remind, you remember what I said about books in September couple of weeks ago when uh, September had just begun, I was, I was almost looking to Canada, what kind of Canadian books could be interesting for you, could be interesting for me. And I found a, a novel by Katie Bickle, which was published by Brindle and Glass in Canada. And I received that one pretty quickly from my same Swedish bookshop. And this is Katie Bickle's uh, collect, uh, novel, Always Brave, Sometimes Kind. I love the cover. I love the cover. Always Brave, Sometimes Kind. Set in urban and rural Alberta, Katie Bickle's debut spans the years from 1990 to 2016. Through cycles of boom and bust in the oil fields, government budget cuts and the rising opioid crisis capturing the intersecting lives of people whose communities sometimes, sometimes stretch farther than they know. Excited. Another novel that got me excited. I, I was lucky this week actually about receiving those books is from the United States, from a First Nation writer. It's a thriller by David Haskell, Wombly Wyden. And this is called Winter Counts. It was also on one of my lists, I think for September probably, or for August. I have to check that up and make a note somewhere. This is Winter Counts by uh, David Haskell, Wombly Wyden. He is enrolled citizen of the Sikango Lakota Nation. Very interesting in reading this one interested in reading this one. The next book is on the shortlist of the National Book Award. Again, here is Charles Yu and Interior Chinatown. I like the cover very much and you have to look at it very carefully because it plays already with the stereotypes. It plays with this foot here. It's a yellow foot. It's really a racial stereotype. It's that's Kung Fu. That's a Chinese temple apparently. And this is a film camera. And this is Charles Yu's Interior Chinatown which I am also reading with Paula, but we haven't decided yet when we are going to do this. And the next and last book is on my list for books. Uh, it's on the last week of the year. I want to read this between Christmas and the new year, maybe, maybe earlier, I don't know. And this is, it's not happy reading that I can tell you and I can tell myself. This is by Maeve McClanahan from England. It's a nonfiction book. It's called No Fixed Abode, Life and Death Among the UK's Forgotten Homeless that was published in the middle of September uh, and arrived also this week here in Stockholm, Sweden. And this is by Maeve McClanahan. I can show you the author, that's her. She has written other books before. So these were, this was a small book haul of books that I received this week. What else has happened this week? I um, worked a lot and maybe that's the reason why I didn't finish Idaho at all. Uh, suddenly I have to, I've tried to interview players of football, soccer players of the women's national team of the United States and of the American Professional League NWSL. And I wasn't so lucky in the beginning to get responses, to get positive responses, to get really a yes from, from a club or, or about a player. And suddenly I got a yes from the North Carolina Courage. And I was so glad on Friday evening 
to be able to talk to Lynn Williams, who is a marvelous person, person and an amazing player. I would call her a sniper in a positive sense of the way she's a number nine, a center forward who has scored many goals. She was the most valuable player in the NWSL in 2016. She won the Golden Boot. She won the, uh, the Shields with the North Carolina Courage three years in a row. She is an American champion and she is now back in the national team and I talked to her about a lot of things about her career, about studying at Pepperdine University, uh, about her injuries that she had during this period of time, growing up with her paralyzed uncle in her home, which shaped her childhood, um, growing up um, as a mixed race uh, young girl and woman who has said that when I grew up and played soccer, not many others did look like me and uh, who made her way after all to the women's national team and is one of the best forwards in the world and it got it was a pretty long talk we talked about 48 minutes or 49 minutes and i made a youtube video about this one as well on zoom with zoom and this is on my other channel but i'm going to link it down below because at least i know that brian from bookish is a great fan of the women's national team of the united states so here brian you have one of your wonderful players you can see a little bit at least of this uh, conversation with Brian, with Lynn Williams, uh, with Lynn Williams, if you want to. Both things are really good things now during the pandemic to really keep me going a little bit, to motivate me. Uh, I heard a podcast from the New York Times this week. I always listen to, almost always listen to the daily of the New York Times. I love this, this uh, signature note when I hear that every day, you know, from the New York Times, I'm Michael Barbaro. This is The Daily, and this is really good, one of the best half hours that I have every day to listen to The Daily, mostly. And this week, Michael talked to uh, Don McNeil, who is the, I think, a senior uh, science journalist of the New York Times for, I think they talked for the fourth time now during the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. And Don McNeil has always been super pessimistic. It was really apocalyptic to listen to him about what we had to expect that everything would get worse would get worse and this would last for years and years and there's no way out and it was really very much founded by arguments by facts what Don McNeil was talking about of course and this time the fourth session with him I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday this week Don McNeil suddenly says well Michael I have to say I'm more optimistic than ever before and this really um, lifted me up a little bit because what, what Don McNeil says in this podcast, I'm linking it down below, is that it's going to get worse over the next couple of months, really. It's going to be a very tough winter. I think everyone expects that in November, December, January, February, maybe even March. But then from April onwards, it's going to get better. And um, Don McNeil is convinced that we get at least three he said, at least three vaccines that are going to work and this will go away and we will slowly come back to normal in the second half of 2021. That's a long way to go still, but um, hopefully that's the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel. In three weeks, there's an election in America and this is going to change, I think, a lot in this, the course of the year, whatever happens in that election. This is something that is also looming around the corner. Um, I know that the video quality tonight is not so good. That depends on it's, it's dark outside and I have just artificial light here in my room. And I should actually get some kind of lamp that is coming towards my face because now I have a red nose like, like an alcoholic, you know. Uh, I, I can promise you, I, I, I'm gonna drink a whiskey afterwards that I have promised myself uh, but uh, it will be a small one, a short one. I will have to do tag videos very soon again. And I also will um, do a video definitely about the Dublin Literary Award because there is a long list or a short list and the award will be announced on the 22nd of October, which is not so far away from now, it's 11 days. And I will make a video of the long list of the Dublin Literary Award because I think it's really worth our and your, uh, all of our attention. Uh, drop a comment down below, subscribe to my channel if you don't do it already, because subscribers um, make it easier for all of us creators on YouTube to create better content and to reach out to more people. I love the reaching out to people uh, the most. 
actually I saw today a tag video by Steve Donahue, and I never stopped this. I never stopped doing. I saw a, a tag video by Steve Donahue where Steve said that um, there are two kinds of YouTubers. There's a bunch of YouTubers that doesn't care about communicating with other people, but there's also uh, the greater bunch of YouTuber booktubers out there that is really keen in communicating with other people and very interested in to listen what other people think, what other people say, what other people recommend. And that's a beautiful companionship uh, that we have here. And I'm very glad to be a, a little, a very small part of it with, a, with my small little channel. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Have a great week 42 and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.